What's going on, Nitro gang? Welcome to Monday Night Nitro. Let me give you guys a chance to come show up here in the live stream. Let me say hello to everybody and then we are going to talk a lot about... What do we talk about on this channel? We talk about Nitro. That's right. It's pretty much straightforward. Guys, did you see the car in the thumbnail? Well, right now it's in the box, okay? We're going to take it out of the box. The rest of the stuff is, is very, very original. I almost guarantee you, nobody knows what this little Nitro in this box is. And I've been spending a lot of Nitro Gang donation money on buying Nitros that I don't even know what the hell they are. Why? So we could all learn about them. That's why. All right? The rest of these are 10th scale Nitro Touring Cars. This is the TC3 I recently picked up, also with the Nitro Gang funds. Right here is the Yokomo GT4, the one that I drove, um, what was it, yesterday? Yeah, I drove this yesterday during a pretty crazy wind. Um, you know, basically kicked ass over there, nothing broke, it's good. We got Ofna CD3, we're going to remove the body. Another pretty classic Ofna Vintage Nitro. A lot of people don't know. That Ofna used to make a lot of uh, nitro touring cars. It was pretty, uh, pretty fantastic. What's going on, Mike Nieves? Is in the house, Nitro Gang member Mike. We got KGM right here. We got Nitro Freak, uh, Vincent DeBerza, Kevin Trappin, of course, the classic Kevin Trappin. Kevin Trappin recently got his first hater on my channel. That's right, this guy. He had a problem with Kevin Trappin having his own cell phone number. You know, he calls me up sometimes on my vintage uh, Motorola flip phone, Kevin Trappin. He had a problem. So we got members of the Nitro Gang with their own haters. That means you're pretty famous, my guy. All right. What do you think about that? All right. Nathan Duenas is right here. Manuel Maldonado. What's going on? He goes, waiting at LAX, watching the stream. Bits, big surprise arriving tomorrow from Manuel Maldonado. Yep. It's gonna be a pretty big surprise. Um, uh, I gotta make room for it, my dude. So room has to be made. And guys, it's gonna be going down pretty good soon. So let me see who else we got. RC Show Off is in the house. RC Show Off. Um, I'm glad you're here because you, my dude, you have a mini nitro motor. And you know what? The one I have in this box right here, we're gonna be opening this up in a little bit, is another mini nitro motor. And you might have some very good input, RC Show Off. So uh, I hope you say during the stream and give us all some pretty interesting information. All right. This is something I got maybe about like two weeks ago. Uh, I bought it. I got it. I looked at it. And then I saved it for a live stream. Okay. What do you think about that? We got Loco Nitro over here. Mark Mancino is in the house. He goes, I got a LD3. Started it for the first time in almost 15 years. Phantom 15. Well, Mark, my dude. The LD3 is a little bit... No, hold on. This is the LD3. Yeah, my bad. What am I talking about? So, the reason I have a couple of uh, vintage Nitro Touring cars on the table, there's a very good reason. So, when, we all, when I unbox this little 1 12th scale, you guys will understand just how truly sickening the mini size of this thing is. And in fact, it's rated at about 1 horsepower. We will take a look at everything. This is a, an actual kit that was built... Now, I'm not going to say I built it because I didn't build it, okay? But somebody built it, and now I got it. So for now, let's enjoy the view. We got tons of nitros. We got the Nitro Gang Cup. We're ready to go today, my guys. All right, Steven Romano was in the house right here. How you doing? Steven, Tag Gritty RC. He goes, bro, you need a 118th Nitro Chaos. Well, guys, we got Sean Stabsky. How you doing? He goes, you're breaking out the secret Nitro. Where did you find it? I have a lot of interesting information planned, bro. And you know what? Do you want to know what we're going to be eating today? What are you guys going to be eating today? What's up, Oscar Aquendo? Welcome to Monday Night Nitro. The question is, what are we all going to be eating? Well, you know what I got? I got myself some very expensive cake. I am going to be cutting this cake in this video and chewing this cake because... People have told me they like when I eat Russian things. So I'm going to do it. Why not? I like cake. I'm traditionally Russian. I might pour some nitro on it. Okay, this was $30. $30 for this cake, bro. Now, 
It's kind of hard to see because you can't really tell like the coloring of it right now, but it's actually, read it, read it, read it. it it's, it's honestly, this is one of my favorite cakes, guys. So I'm going to be opening this up. We're going to eat it. Two speed nitro cake. Okay. Yeah, I'm not kidding. $30 I just paid for that cake. $30. All right. What about other nitro minis? Okay. Well, we have ourselves some detailed uh, research materials. This issue of Radio Control Car Action Magazine, it has a ton of micro nitros inside. Um, do you, can you guys name a couple? Well, there's the Trinity Itsy Bitsy Spider. Okay, I think that one was electric, but there's a Trinity, uh, whatever, some kind of mini nitro spider. There's the, the Schumacher Rascal. There's actually a ton of micro nitros in here with tiny little engines, okay? That segment, it was popping years ago. And guys, I don't really like to use words like popping, okay? That's not a Nitro Gang word. But for this, I will use it. It's, it's, it's allowed. Okay, let me go to the stream right here. Yeah, Steven Romano goes Nitro Cake. Well, that was a $30 cake, bro, okay? Pissed me off. Um, I will tell you about the one in this box in a little bit. We're just waiting for some more people to come into the... Uh, yeah. I can't read the Sean Stavsky. Hold on. Pirog. Something pirog, he said. Pirog. Yeah, I, I, I can't read the first word. I'm not very good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nitro Chaos, baby. That's right, Tegrity. That's right. Yeah. All right. Nitro World Order from John Goodwin. All right. So, we will go over that magazine. There's like a ton of uh, older micro nitros. That whole segment was very popular a while ago. And... I'll also be going over the box on this and you guys like they actually wrote some pretty interesting clever things on why the mini nitro segment was popular. It turns out, and I think you would know this through experience, the smaller your nitro motor, the quieter it is. So actually, if you're worried about noise, getting a small nitro will make you quieter. Who would have guessed? Pure logic and obviousness, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me put it this way. My Savage XL with the 5.9 is the loudest nitro I have. And my uh, HPI 15FE in like an old RC is the quietest nitro I have. Does that make sense to you now? Exactly. Yeah. What's up, Kevin? Oh, yeah. Kevin Trapp and saying hello to a hot rod. How you doing, everybody? Sickening, says KGM. That's right. KGM is truly sickening. Yeah. Yeah. Shadow Ops RC goes, that $30 for parts of nitro gone. Yeah, hope it's a good cake. Man, I had to think eight times. A eight times. I had to think eight times before I bought that cake, but then I was like, guys, I wanted the cake, you know, I, was, I, I just wanted it, I, I felt like I deserved it, you know. Um, we got Eddie Chan, channel member here in the house. All right, Curtis Baker, how you doing, bro? Yeah, yeah, that's a gallon of nitro fuel for hybrid, Steven Romano says, that's actually very true. So this cake, well, I just showed you the cake. That's a gallon of nitro fuel, basically. Pissed me off, but what are you gonna do? All right. What's up, Nitro Dave? How you doing, bro? Yeah, he goes, the .28 Pro engine is proper loud. Yeah, basically, the larger your Nitro engines, the larger the tuned, uh, you know, pipes of chambers, and you basically wind up with a louder engine. Uh, well, a louder noise from the vehicle. I don't want to say it's only because of the engine because you have other uh, necessary components, right? But this one is actually quite uh, quiet. I was able to find some awesome YouTube videos on this running. They're, of course, they're all super old because when I opened this, I'm going to ask you guys a question. When do you think this was made? Did I put it in the title here? No, because that's a trick question. When do you think this was made? Now, first, I have a bunch of awesome vintage nitros off the LD3. I will remove the body to this in a little bit. It's basically kick-ass. You're never gonna find such a nice one in this condition because it's just not gonna happen, okay? Uh, I love them, and nitros don't come to this channel to die. They come to survive. They come to live on and they come to enjoy nitro cake with me, okay? So let me put this to, oh, we got Kellen's Automotive right here. How you doing? We got Iron Wolf Plays. No, bro, you're not late. Don't you worry. We didn't even unbox this thing yet. We're going to unbox it right now. Hold on a second. I got to clear this table a little bit, okay? We're going to have some cake. We might drink something from the Nitro Gang Cup over here too. So let me put this somewhere where it's safe. Okay. 
It's under the table. I got tons of nitros under this table, guys, okay? There's probably like four nitros under this table. In case someone brings something up, I'll be able to pull out a nitro no matter what happens, all right? What's up, Big John D? How you doing? Right. Yokomo GT4, you guys saw this. Basically super sick, amazing. I love it. You can't kill it. You know, look at those uh, chassis cutouts. Nitro touring cars, the more cutouts you have, the cooler your nitro car. It, it's very easy. It's like, remember when you were in like, you know, grade school, and when you had shirts with like giant logos on them, not this one, and you had like a shirt with a giant logo, let's say the Gap shirt, whatever, the Gap sweater, and it would be Gap, it would be all over it. You were a cool guy back then, okay? When you went to Old Navy, and you bought a shirt with Old Navy all over that, you were cool. Well, in this case, when you're a 10th scale nitro touring car, when you're missing a lot of aluminum on the chassis where you could have aluminum, you're a cool guy, all right? Yeah, what do you think about that? Okay, so we're gonna put this to the side now. Uh, Two-speed, by the way. Do you guys think this is a two-speed baby? That's the question. Let's see, I'm gonna let you guys respond to the comments about whether this is a two-speed baby because I don't think I told you whether it is or it isn't, did I? Did you see it in the picture? I don't think you saw it, no. All my trick questions, they're very good questions. Joseph Watkins, what's up, my dude? He goes, Tommy Hilfiger, that's right. When you had a Tommy Hilfiger shirt, you were pretty much the coolest dude, okay? Okay, so I am removing one nitro at a time from this table because we are getting ready to look at the box and unbox this thing, okay? Because it's basically going to blow you away. It will blow you away, okay? Um, Reebok, Reebok pump shoes goes Nitro Feek. Man, I don't think I was ever that cool. I'll be honest with you. Um, that, that I never reached that level, okay? That's why today I satisfy my eighth grade bullying abilities. Um, well, you know, what I should have done to that piece of shit with buying more Nitros. That's what I do, okay? So, uh, th this is the TC3. All of these Nitros will come back to the table. I have them here on purpose. Not because I just want to show them off, Although that is about 99% of the purpose of every video. You want to show off your nitros. But there's also that other 1%. You know, that 1% that likes to occupy the parks by Wall Street. Well, this is going to be occupying some table space in a little bit. Okay, let's move it for now. Yeah. By the way, TC3, they got minimal chassis cutouts. I think the TC3 forgot the chassis cutouts, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Although this is a pretty sick nitro, I drove it legit like today, and oh my god, like it, it drives so straight, like I, I could not believe it. It's incredible. What's up, JP, bro? How you doing? Okay, all right. So first thing, let me go here to uh, Eric Neistat is in the house. Okay, we got the motivator. How you doing, bro? The motivator also is a king of nitro. Uh, comes to us from the land of. The Maple Nitro Gang, he runs an HPI Nitro RS43, so, so one of those variations. Today they just called him the Nitro 3 chassis. Um, you know, years ago you had the RTR3, RS43, RS43 Type SS, the Evo, the, the whatever, RTR Plus. Now it's just, like if you're looking for parts, they're basically all the same. It's all just called the Nitro 3. Go figure. Nitro 3. I got nothing bad to say about that because I love you, Nitro 3, okay? All right. Now, this right here, it will probably blow everybody away. Now, I know the box. It's just a box, okay? I did some pretty in-depth research, and it's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, take a look at the front here. So, it's called the Scoot 09R, and you can't kill it. Now, I'll go over the box a little bit better with like a, a different form of recording in a little bit. Yeah. So, should we just open up the box and look at it right away or go over the features? Because the features, oh my God, th th they're gonna blow you away. This is like when you see this little nitro, you'll understand what I'm talking about, guys. Okay, you, you, you'll understand. It's a Scood, says Curtis Baker, that's right. So, yes, it's a Scood. Uh, I actually do not know what this is. I looked up the current distributor warehouse. It, it is traced to the Netherlands. Okay, so I did some online research. It is traced to the Netherlands. The distributor is, um, let me see, Robotronics. 
I think we'll get we'll get to the browsers later. I have a couple web browsers open with it. All right, open it, bro. Says Kevin Trabin. All right, we're gonna open it. You're gonna like what you see. But there's a lot of other stuff, okay? Because like when you see it, uh, there's other stuff. All right, so check this out. We're gonna open it like this, and then we'll get a better a better perspective. Okay, so this is a kit, right? So the person that built this built um, built it really well. I looked at it already. They built it well. So here we have the instruction manual. We have a belt. And there's a reason why there's a belt. There's also an engine manual. I'll show you guys uh, all of these things in a little bit. It's actually very interesting. We have the original stickers, the entire sticker sheet with the Scoot 09R. That's right, the Scoot. Who would have thought that would be a Nitro RC card name, right? But it is, all right, it is. All right, now here it is. Whoa, what's up, Sergio M? I see you right here, Von Boy, how you doing? Schaefer9112, guys, check this out. I know it's not much to see, but once I remove the body, this thing will blow you away, okay? So, let me remove this whole thing out of the box. There's still some other things here, there's nothing in these boxes. Probably this was a kid who was built. Yeah, Iron Wolf says lots of carbon fiber. Wait till you see other things. So this is the chassis. Okay. Um, based on the number of cutouts they have for this chassis, this was probably the Banana Republic of clothing. Okay. To this day, I cannot and do not shop at Banana Republic. Okay. Because ripoff. But this right here based on the chassis cutouts. It's basically missing the chassis. Look how cut out it is. Yeah, Kellen's Automotive says two speed baby. So let me put this a little bit down now. And there's a lot of other parts here. So how about this? I'm gonna close the box up a little bit and um, we'll go over this because you really need to get a very good point of view on what you're about to see. This is a mini nitro, okay? Today, there's only one mini nitro left on the market and RC show off right here has one, but that is basically nowhere close to the comp competition level of this nitro. Um, you know, I bought this from a person and I, I am filming a, a completely different video on this. So many of the details on, on whatever will be disclosed there. Basically I use Mercari. Mercari is like kind of like an auction website. You submit bids. Basically they reject your bids almost all the time. Uh, Mercari. And, um, you know, the guy accepted my bid. I'll show you later on what it is, how much I paid. For now, we're here to talk about Mini Nitro. And this is a Mini Nitro. So the body, right, we have the plastic film on it. Um, it came pre-cut, so these holes were all pre-cut. I asked the seller, and he, you know, he told me the holes were pre-cut, and it was basically uh, mounted like this, but you gotta paint it, okay? so. Look at that. Yeah, it makes you happy, doesn't it? All right. Okay, running on a track says Iron Wolf. This was an actual competitive track car. And there's evidence here. When I remove the body in a little bit, you guys will understand why I'm saying that. So let me get over here to the other side and we will um, begin looking at the chassis, okay? And then we will compare this. Oh, by the way, you're probably asking yourself, bro, just a little touring car. Like, how small is it actually? Come on, somebody ask me how small is it? I'm looking at the chat. Say how small is it? Say it. I dare you. Or I dare you do 100 push-ups with me. How small is it? Well, what's up, Dale? How you doing? Martins RC Store says, how small is it? Well, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so this is a TC3. We all know the size of like a basic 110th nitro, right? Kevin Trappin, how small is it? Well, I'm gonna tell you, hold up. Okay, uh, Whiskey Tango, come on, it's not 124. That'd be crazy, bro, come on, that'd be crazy. So this is a 110th scale. Let me hold this one up right next to it. And you guys will understand what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, the, the, do you understand what I'm talking about? So I'm basically holding them, let's say both by my shoulder, so you, you have a good point of view. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Like when you actually see a 112th Nitro, you understand. Look at that. Let me back up a little bit. 
do you see what I'm talking about? It, it's it's tiny, okay, compared to a one tenth scale. And the one tenth scale is already very small. So these are advertised as one twelfth scale, and I would say it's it's probably a one fourteenth, you know. But it really depends what you scales don't matter. What matters is the amount of nitros you have and the amount of push-ups you could do. And we have two nitros in our hand, and we're not doing push-ups tonight because well we'll we'll see how we how we get there, okay. One tenth scale. This is already super, super small. Like to run a nitro like this, even though like I'm sitting here, it looks big, right? To run a nitro like this, you need a fairly nice, clean parking lot with good pavement. Okay. Yeah. This is completely different, guys. Okay. So these were competition nitros, you know, and and I read a lot of information about it. Take a guess what year this is from. Okay, well, I understand right now you didn't get a good point of view because I basically didn't show it to you. But, um, Levon Boy goes, 0.9 engines are only on, yeah, they're, they're small engines. Um, okay, somebody got it right, okay. Oh, what's up? Dion channel member has been a channel member for two months already. Thank you, my dude. Uh, that's just a badge. It doesn't mean he's becoming another channel member. He's He's been a channel member. Okay, but anyway, it's just part of the YouTube, uh, you know, propaganda going on here. So, Right, Von Boy is right. He goes, they run on tracks as well as the bigger 110 brothers. That's right. So in the marketing I was reading about this, they were talking about, you know, that these run on proper 110 nitro tracks and they're competitive, you know, at that and they're fine. Um, let's remove the body, right? Let me put um, this over here. This thing is, is new, just so you understand, the person built this, 1/10th, 1 ni 1 12th Nitro, and then basically said, um, let me give you the rundown. What's up, Mark Brennan? How you doing, Mark? And uh, basically, the seller told me he built it. You know, there's a little bit of an issue with it. I, I will tell you what it is in a little. And then he just went to regular 1 8th uh, Nitro racing segment, because running something like this, you're highly limited, okay? You're highly limited, unless you're like... In a very limited space area, it looks like this person probably was not in a limited space area. So, you can't kill this nitro. Oh, Shadow Op RC, how you doing? He goes, NWO fund, $10. Thank you, bro. I'm going to be putting that towards the cake fund today because my cake cost about 30 bucks. Okay, uh, cake ripped me off. All right, so let me remove the body. Then we're going to cut the cake. Then we'll talk about the specifics of this. I, I almost guarantee you guys, this nitro will blow you away, okay? Now, I understand some other channels, they've recently got some new crawlers, some micro crawlers, tell them to get a micro nitro. They're never gonna do it, you know why? Because they're suckers, that's why, okay? All right, let's remove the body. All right, so the Lexan on the body is extremely nice, but it, it's extremely nice, okay. What do you think about that, Nitro Gang? It's beautiful. Tell me this is not beautiful. I'm going to hold it up close to you. Oh, my God. Now, what you see here, this is all original. Um, no aftermarket parts. No anything extra. Original pipe. Original 0.9 size engine. 0.9. Okay, look at that carbon fiber. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. It even has, if you look at it this way. It's got a proper set of staggered wheels, guys. Um, so the rear wheels are, are wider than the front wheels. Proper wheelage. The wheelage is very proper. Nitro Dave over here with a good observation. I was going to get to it. Uh, Nitro Davo goes, no belt. So, yes. If you look at the front, it's actually missing a belt. See, okay, so right here, the, the wheels are not actually connected. So it turns out that, like, I, I think in the assembly process, the seller probably either lost or broke apart on the front pulley. So we are currently rear-wheel drive only. We got a situation going on. But, you know, rear-wheel drive, it's better than zero-wheel drive, okay? Because, like, when you crash your armor and it winds up being a two-piece addition, you have zero-wheel drive. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, this is never going to be zero. It's going to be a two-wheel drive, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scale model concept says it even has belt tensioners. So I'm going to do this. Let me give you a close-up view. Uh, Jesse Stewart says, can you get one in RTR? So the problem with that, my dude, is let me ask you guys a question. What year is this from? Yeah, Kevin Trappen says it looks like it's never been run. It's never been run. Now, the current outstanding question is, what year 
is this from? It's, it's brand new, okay? But what year is it from? Oh man, uh, why you guys got it all correct right over here? <laughs> uh, Brabant's uh, both G right here, if I said that correctly, said 2008, he's right. So I'm going to show you some actual evidence. This was announced in 2008. Now, I, I, let's assume it's 2008 to 2009. It was announced in 2008. Um, exactly. Everything here is, is super, super high end. Now, do you guys know what this little item is over here to the side? What is this? Like, why did I call this a competition uh, nitro kit? What's this? You see what I'm pointing to with my finger right here? What is this? If you notice, no RTR will ever have this. Okay, what's this? So this is called a transponder mount. Vert Projects Ghost Corn Dog Holder. <laughs> transponder mount, my bro. So you would mount um, an electronic device that the track would give you right over here called the transponder. And it would track and gauge and count, right? How many laps you did. In order for you to know, um, you know, who you're destroying or who's destroying you. Now, at that time, the destruction was pretty serious, you know, based on your two-speed adjustment. Of course, two-speed baby. Now, um, yeah, so this was a serious competition, ready, nitro. If you look at the chassis layout, notice the fuel tank. It is center-mounted. Very, very nice. Now, what other car that I have has a center mounted fuel tank guys do, do you do you know what other car that i have has a center mounted fuel tank the yokomo gt4 basically also every other serpent every other mugen basically every single high-end car has a center mounted fuel tank okay yeah so nitro dave goes yeah competition buggies yeah but, but that's completely different buggies are completely different you know this, this is a 112 scale nitro touring um I don't, I don't even know what you would call it. You know, Sean Stapsky says Fortec. Man, Fortec has a center-mounted fuel tank. Are you sure? I'm not sure if it does. I don't have a Fortec right now to check, actually. But um, I was thinking Yokomo GT4. All right, and basically every single serpent. Okay, so for now, I'm a little hungry. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to eat a little bit of cake. We're going to cut some cake, okay? And then we will open up the rest of the box, look inside. And there's still some very interesting stuff in the box all over over here it's it, it's basically very interesting um and we'll compare it to a proper 110 scale nitro yeah anyway yeah von boy goes the v1 yeah so there there are other ones but like out of the ones that i own it, it's only the yokomo gt4 okay because uh you know it was cheap all right <laughs> all right you guys want to have a little bit of cake now all right let's uh break out the cake Okay, first, you know, for a drink, what are we drinking? Unfortunately, I ran out of any serious stuff. We gotta have some almond milk, okay? We, we got nothing else. We're gonna have almond milk in the nitro gain cup. Yeah. Okay, so actually out of, out of almond milk too now. Freaking piece of crap. All right, all right, okay. What about this, should we do this? Should we crush it? Guys, should we crush this almond milk? We're gonna headbutt it. That's what happens when you're out of almond milk. All right. Um, so first, we'll also cover, you know, the nitros in this vintage magazine. It's, it's going to blow you away. Get ready. It's going gonna, it's gonna to blow you away. Yeah, pretty much every comment I say, things are going to blow you away. But that's basically because it's true. All right. All right. Let me show you guys the cake right here. I'm going to take the camera. And uh, I will show you up close. All right? Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, Von Boy goes, check the chassis. There must be a port to mount the RX battery. So right here, I'm going to actually show you a surprise right here on it. This one has a battery already. So check that out. The battery is already mounted on this chassis. It, it, it's pretty much incredible. Look at the workmanship on it. You know, it... Even the, uh, honestly, I even like the way that this uh, uh, air filter has like a little cover on top. It's, it's incredible. Kevin Trappen says that's a rich looking cake. Well, let me show you how rich you got to be to buy this cake. So it's basically, you know, whatever. 
$30 to buy this cake. What do you think about that, Nitro Gang? $30. All right. So, it's good till basically forever. Okay. Um, what is this called? So, this, this is layers of nut meringue and charlotte cream. Anyways, I've had it before. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, so Natalie Cake is the bakery like that does these cakes. Actually, very, very good. I, I've had this before. Uh, personally, I'm not a cake person. I'm a donut and nitro person. Okay? Donuts and nitro. By the way, guys, look at how little this pipe is. It's freaking funny. L look how little it is. It's cute, guys. Jesse Stewart says happy birthday. Well, bro, thank you, but it ain't my birthday. Um, although, kind of feels like it because we got some nitros, right? Okay, so we're going to open up this cake. Let's see. Ugh. So these have a very good cover. So good that it's very hard to open. All right, yeah, the cover is incredible. All right. It's kind of like a built-in Tupperware cover. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, so we got to... Remove all this because, like, we don't want to get nitro stuff dirty, right? Okay. All right, guys, hold up. We got ourselves a plate. We got a plate and we got a $30 cake. Very expensive. Okay. So we also have a, uh, a gold-plated fork, right, because of uh, Donald Trump, right? Why not? You'd run nice nitros, you need a gold plate of fork. Basically uh, simple. Okay, we're gonna cut this. Th this is honestly the best cake I had in my life. It's a very fluffy cake, not like a typical, typical like, a, you know, layered like white cake or something like that they call them. Ah, it's like partial cream and um, basically miracle. Okay. Oh God. Let's hope we don't make a mess here. It's going to piss me off. All right. All right, here we go. So we got ourselves the cake. So basically you got, I know it doesn't look like much, but this is delicious, guys. It's it's delicious. Let me move this to the side now because I'm uh, going to have problems. All right. Okay. So I'm going to vacuum all that later. Don't you worry. Nothing's going to happen. We're going to take care of this. Yeah. Okay, guys. So. Are you ready for this? This is honestly one of the best cakes I, I, I've had in my life, okay? Mmm. Wow. I know it doesn't look like much. But it's incredible. It's like um, like a meringue. It's very incredible. I can't even describe it honestly. Right. We're gonna eat a little bit, have a little bit of a snack break, and then we're gonna talk more nitro. I'll show you guys inside this box. Thirty dollar cake. Well, it's what it is. Joseph Watkins says, "Take that thing and put it sideways." <laughs> they pretty much did that to me at the store today when they rang me up for thirty dollars. Pissed me off. All right, but it's delicious. Run it over the raminator. People are saying too much money. We could only run over the Costco chickens. All right, I'm gonna eat a little bit. We're gonna get rid of this. Then we're gonna do an up close view. All right. Okay, guys. All right. So let's um, open up the rest of the box. Okay, we got a lot of stuff going on, on the table here. Give me a second, guys. Got to put all this away. What's up, JCL Castellan? Okay. 
Now, before I do that, you know what? I got, I got a lot of stuff over here. This is not cool. I didn't plan this very well. Okay. Let's do this. How about we compare the size of both of these together? Okay, just, just for interest alone. All right? We'll have this box open. So we'll do this. We're gonna look at both of these pretty up close. So this is the one we just took out, the, the Scoot 09R. You could tell the design is, is, is basically beautiful. Everything is, is assembled incredible. Now look at the rear suspension on this thing. It, it, look at the sway bar. It's incredible, look at it. Now I will admit it is lower than, like if, if I was in like eighth grade, I would say lower than your mama's IQ, but we're not gonna say that today, you know. But if you're in eighth grade, feel free to say, it's lower than your mama's IQ. But in this case, it's it's actually just very low. Now, over here, uh, my understanding is this is a servo mount over here. Yeah, this is a uh, regular, yeah, this is a regular servo mount. And our other servo would go, let's see, where does it go? I think, oh yeah, the other servo would mount right over here. So very low servo mounting positions, basically incredible. Now these are slicks and they are extremely soft. Like the, the rubber is extremely soft. Like I could not believe it. Now, what's a very interesting thing is, do you guys understand what I'm doing right here? Look at the rear wheels. Look at the rear wheels. We got ourselves a, uh, I think this is a one-way one -way diff in the back. Yeah, so it doesn't roll back, right? The front is freewheeling because we have no belt right now. Yeah. So Mark Brennan says, check out that clutch. So the clutch might be a situation because the seller actually told me he's missing one of the clutch shoes or springs. So we're not going to do that now. You know, I'm going to have to do that off camera. But guys, I'm about to remove the body off of this TC3 and you will understand. Hybrid is the engine not even broken in, says Shadow Ops RC. This is brand new. Never in life seen fuel. And yes, you do need a starter box. That, that's a problem we're going to get to. So I'm going to remove the TC3 body. And you guys will understand. L look at the size difference. Do you see what I'm talking about? If I put them up right here, wheelbase in the front together. Wow. It it's completely different, right? This is a 0.15. This is a 0 0.09. 0 0.09, guys. And it's brand new. Joshua H., this is brand new. The person just built this. Okay? You you this is something that you would never see in the world. Now, if you look at the front also, right over there with my finger, if you notice me pointing over there, that is basically like the pivot uh, sway bar system that they use in Serpents. Now, right now I'm missing some preload here, so it's a little weird, but you see that little mechanism right there? That's the same way that the sway bar system works in, um, in, in Serpents that I've seen. People asking me how much. So I wound up paying, I'll show you in the auction a little bit, I think it was like about 140 total all in. About 140, I think. Yeah, uh, it was a very good deal, but there are a little bit of uh, situations going on. Keep in mind, I'm missing, you know, the, the whole thing in the front, we got no belt. Well, we have the belt, but like the pulley, you see the belt pulley? It's supposed to be a belt going to the front also. So, um, look, how, look how small it is compared side to side with the TC3. It's crazy, right? Like when you actually look at them, look them, look at them close up. Considering this is already a, a regular one tenth scale nitro. Curtis Baker says rare. I've never seen one. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you think so. Me too. That's why I bought it. You know. Now this is not really the kind of nitro that I might really ever run. But you know, it. it look at this little pipe, man. Look at look at the TC three pipe. It's funny, right? Like it's, it's it's so small when you look at them up close. Look at the front wheels. It it's completely different. Like <laughs> it's just so funny, but the build quality on this Scudo 09 is incredible. Now, unfortunately, yes, these do need a starter box cuz you could tell it's a sealed backplate right there, right? What's up XGLHH? What's up, man? What's up? So, this, this is definitely a one-of-a-kind nitro. You will probably never see this 
anywhere else. Um, what's up, Shane? Nitro in my veins. And um, yeah, this is called, let me show you guys right now, the rest of this stuff, okay? In the box. So let me go over the box and then we'll show you the rest of uh, what they're talking about. It's very interesting. Like, you got to read some of this, actually. Okay. Let's go over here. So I'm going to move some of this. We'll get some okay lighting. Yeah. Sorry for some of the shaking, but uh, we got no choice. We got no choice. Off the chicks, how you doing? Um, off the chick says, it's not the size, it's what you do with it. Well, in this case, you race with it. You know, in this case, it's actually very easy. There's only one thing to do. You run it. Okay. So here we go, some information on the box. The box is very nice. So it says, point, well, it doesn't say point. It says 09CZT high power racing engine. Three belt driven four wheel drive performance touring car. Pretty much can't kill it. So this motor is included, right? This is the one we have. Now, in terms of power, here's some of the power specs. Guys, check this out. We have uh, 1.5 cc, which is tiny, RPM 35K, which is normal, max power, 0.95 horsepower. That's honestly huge for this displacement, considering, you know, like 0.15 size engines don't even have one horsepower. So this right here has, let's just call it one horsepower from a 0.09. You, you know, you, you can't kill it. I mean, I also can't start it, but you also can't kill it. You know what I mean? Yeah, Mark Brennan, in the box. That's why I bought this. So there's a lot of other interesting things. Let's continue to, you know, well, this is basically like just basic information. It says adjustable this, adjustable that, blah, blah. We don't need that. We don't need any of that information. Um, let's go to what they're talking about with the Scudo 9R. Like, what what is the big deal, right? So they got a picture of it. This is the one we have. They're saying, I'm going to read some of this. The Scoot 09R, excellent performance and concise design, can compete with, with 110th GP touring cars. Assembly and adjustment is easy because there is no need for special tools or gauges to adjust camber, toe angle, or car width. That's really good. So they're saying, um, hold on, guys. Let me put this in a, in a, in a better direction so I can actually... Hold the phone without it vibrating for you. Okay. So let's move the TC3 out. Okay, and what we're doing right now is we're reading the box. Okay, that's that's what we're doing. We're reading the box, it's very easy. Okay. Now this is one of those things where you, you will never see this probably ever again in life. Okay, because uh, I looked at eBay on, on YouTube, absolutely nothing about it. It says, the Scoot 09R is a 1 12th scale four-wheel drive touring car. The size is compact, so the driving playground is less limited. Well, that was interesting. In, in respect to noise, the Scoot 09 is much less than the 1 10th GP touring car. Okay, so they're basically saying it's quieter. Although this is kind of a typo, uh, I would say in my opinion. Um, then it goes over here. We're talking about, yeah, how's the light? Lights okay? Okay. So it says you will need one radio, uh, two low cost uh, servos. The Scoot 09 already includes engine, muffler, receiver, battery, pre cut body decals, and high grip tires. That's really cool. Here they're talking about that you need uh, a starter box or you need their starter box. Okay. Um, yeah. It says the Scoot 09 is available to fit one tenth mini car body. I'm not aware of any one tenth mini car body. What the hell are they talking about? There's no one tenth mini car body. It's either one tenth or it's not. So fuel tank, they call it big, which is 50 cc. That's actually very, very tiny, but that's fine. So um, let's look around the rest of the box. There's actually a lot of interesting things. Let me uh, open this. Now in the back, in the back here, it gets a little bit interesting, guys, okay? What's up, RC, see you later. So here we got some pictures in the back of the box. We got some of the features and specs. So these are things that this already has. Guys, these are not options. It already has all of this, which, which is fairly nuts. So we got a super durable front rear bevel 
gear diff. Well, that's obvious. Brake shaft pivot with two ball bearings. Much smooth and more reliable. Okay, then. Front universal swing shaft. Alrighty, then. 50cc fuel tank. Um, durable and reliable two-speed system. We got no special tools, whatever. Nah, nah, blah, blah, you know. Carbon radio plate and front rear shock tower. All right. High quality aluminum pipe. We got a uh, 500 milliamp hour receiver pack and, you know, rubber grommets for like the radio trays, whatever. Nonsense. So here they're talking about the starter box you need. Right over here. So this is the starter box they're talking about. You need uh, required for operation, not included. So you could basically use, I guess, any starter box, but they're saying you need a starter box, right? Because there's no pull start on this on the system. Now on this side, you just have some technical data over here, some tech data, whatever, uh, shoot, you know, low CG, whatever, blah, blah. Oh, Kevin Trappin, how you doing? $25. Thank you, Kevin Trappin. Yeah, you must have felt bad for the cake I got, I got overcharged on, right? Yeah, so, all right, now guys, should we take a look inside the box now? You know, this was already built. Um, so keep in mind, it was already built. You know, I, I was not the builder. All right, let's do this. So there are still some elements in the box that um, could be assembled. Okay, this is what we got. So this was a full kit that was built by the person I bought it from. Okay, now in these boxes, there's nothing. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe at one time, there might have been something in these boxes, but right now they're empty. Right, if you open them, there's, there's nothing inside these boxes at all. But maybe at one time there was, you know, like all the parts bags and stuff. So building a nitro touring car is, is, is a super fun thing to do. You know, I, I will admit that even building a basic Tamiya kit is fun. Okay, so I, I will say it. We have some you know, it looks like some of these are spares. I don't know. It's like all over the place here, honestly. I, I don't want to take take it out right now. You know, some stuff is like all over the place. We got, this is, what's this? Diff grease, right over here, diff grease, right? Um, we got silicone oil right here, silicone oil. Um, some plastic, some uh, foam stuff. You know, this looks like an empty, oh no, this is, Pulley collar. Okay, so this is the brand AM, AMR. It looks like original, whatever. AMR Tech. I never heard of them. Uh, but this is a foreign brand, really. So the rest of this is just like loose, loose odds and ends. It looks like uh, adjustments for camber caster, stuff like that. So we'll put all this back. Uh, Mark Brennan with a good question goes, how much do these retail when new? So I looked some stuff up online. You know what? Right now, let's go and, and, and do some online research. Let me close this box up uh, for a little bit and take a look at the remaining elements we have. Okay, and then we will talk about that. Um, let me get some of these parts over here. The stickers, you got to apply the stickers yourself. Okay, so it's a brand new sticker sheet. Pretty, pretty freaking dope, man. I, I love mini nitro stuff. Like, I, I just love it. Okay, so let me get this now. Let me move this back up a little, guys. Okay, how's the view? The view okay? Is it sickening? Okay, I hope it's sickening. All right. So, here is the instruction manual, okay, and some remaining elements here. I don't know what this is. What's this? Oh, this looks like a window mask. I think a window mask that you're supposed to cut out. It looks like a blank sheet. Yeah, yeah, this is a window mask. It looks like a sticker for, for painting the, the body. Pretty nice. Okay. We got a belt here. We got, it looks, what's this? The uh, engine instruction manual. I'm just going to look at it here on video. We'll see if there's anything interesting on it. Now, you know, when I do another video on it, I, I will uh, update you guys. Okay. So, what do we got? Yeah, uh, basically basic engine parts is what you got. You know, we're, we're not gonna, it's basically engine parts. Yeah, all right, Kevin Trappin, thanks for stopping by, see you later, bro. Uh, we're gonna be here making nitro grade again, don't you worry, Kevin Trappin. Okay, so these are just some instructions. I guess they're talking about the, the needle tuning on the carb, which is obvious, right? Um, blah, blah, and blah. Uh, I'll look at this later. 
And maybe if Doug DeMuro wants to give this a test drive, I'll, I'll call him up. Okay, but as of now, I don't think he will. Oh, look at this little belt. It's a little belt, guys. It's freaking cool. Look at that. Yeah, off to work. See ya, Mark Brennan. See ya, bro. We got a belt. We got fuel line over here. We got the original instruction manual. So, you know, it, really nice paper. I got to say the paper quality is, is, is substantially nice. So, blah, blah. You know, we're going to... Yeah, so this is how the kit was assembled. You know, piece by piece. You know, this is what the owner did. So I'll go over this later in, in some further detail. Uh, but for now, we got to get back to comparing it and doing other things. Okay? Okay, let me put this to the side. And actually, while I'm doing it, let me eat a little bit of cake over here. We got some cake. I got to eat this. I'm kind of hungry right now. Right. You guys got to eat cake with your nitros. You want some cake nitro? Oh, not really? Okay. All right. Leo Watson says you should start it up. So the problem is, right now I can't do it because we have no starter box. This is a non-pull start engine. It's a sealed backplate motor. So the flywheel is right here. You would have to have a proper starter box. But don't worry, dude. I will be running it. Like, it's, it's, it's going to go down. You know, you can't kill a nitro on this channel. Check out the suspension in the back. It, it is It is. Super low. It is, it is lower than, I would say, a lot of the standards of, of modern reality television, okay? Which is very low standards. Okay. Now, let's get, let's move the phone a little bit. Do you guys want to look at a vintage Ofna CD3? Of course you do. Of course you do, Come. Okay, let me move this for now. Where's my Ofna? Okay, the Ofna is right here. What did I say? I got nitros under the table. You guys thought I was kidding, huh? No, we don't kid. Ofna chicks, are you here? This is for you. Ofna chicks. This right here. This is for you. Okay, so let me put this over here. Let's put the Scoot 09R, you know, super rare, to the side. And we will look at a vintage Ofna 110 scale nitro touring car. You guys ready for this? Also super, super rare. You're probably never going to see anything like this. Yeah. Ever, ever in your life. You, you, probably ever. Okay. I, I'm like one of the last people that thinks these are cool. Um, and that's fine. If, if uh, people out there don't like these, give them to me. I'll take it. Okay. So here we go. This right here is a proper one-tenth scale nitro, okay? Now, this runs, it's basically like new. Now, if you compare it side to side, you know, the Scoot 09R, you know, it's, it's, it's very tiny, which is uh, the appeal of this class, like the running cost, the fact that it's small, the fact that it's quieter, that was the big selling point. You could run these on very small tracks, right? Now, the one-tenth scale... Oh my God, this is so low. Who thought this was a good idea? Oh wow, this actually has the same um, tension style sway bar system in the back here, in the front here too. It's pretty nice for an Ofna, right? Yeah, now check this out. You can't kill it, Ofna. With, of course, the two-speed baby, right? Guys, what do you think about that? The question is, do we have sickening compression or not? Do people want to know if the compression is sickening? Or you just tell me. Yeah, this thing definitely has a front rear one way because like I cannot roll it back. You see that the tires do not really roll back. Normally all, all like 10 scale cars roll back. So this is a Force 12. Often I had a thing with, you know, Force engines. So right there, Force 12, you see that right there? Force 12, baby. 
That's right, Force 12, you can't kill it. Natural Freak, that's right. Uh, um, where's my Yokomo right here? We're gonna know, the TC3. So we're gonna put up the TC3 and all of these touring cars together. What do you think about that? Oh yeah. Now that is an image that you wanna sleep on, right? Uh, well, remember before you go to sleep. You know, people count cheap when they go to sleep, um, but you know, I count nitros. You know what I'm saying? And speeds, we count speeds. Do you know how many speeds we have right here, guys? We have six speeds. Six speeds, baby, six. Okay, TC3, perfect. CD, uh, LD3, wallpaper right there. Tony's garage goes, that's right, I, I totally agree. This is uh, where it's at, can't kill it. All right, so what about the compression? Someone asked me about the compression? Well, it's sickening. We got it. Well, it's actually hard to do with one hand. But don't worry, all my engines turn over at all times because uh, proper maintenance, okay? Now, what about the chassis? Offner has, I would say, an okay amount of chassis cutouts, but I would not call this a sickening cutout. Now, let's, let's give a view like this. This is going to be the chassis cutout view, okay? Now, you see this? This is like a nitro stand. Um, and, and the coolest car is, is, once again, the car with the most cutouts, with, which is basically this. Oh, you heard says I love the sight. Well, you know what? The question is, I actually have more nitros, but uh, we're not going to put them here. There's more right over here. There's all the TC3 right over there. And actually, I forgot one. Man, I'm such a noob, I forgot one. The Yokomo GT4. You know what? This might win the chassis cutout contest. What do you guys think? Okay, so this one doesn't stand up that well because it's basically pissing me off. Okay, so this one doesn't stand up, so we're going to have to hold it. So, what do you guys think about that? This right here was art. Who wins the chassis cutout? I got to say the Scoot. The Scoot has a lot of freaking holes, but the Yokomo... Um, th this is the Yokomo, guys, the blue chassis right here. It got so many holes that it's as if they forgot to put the chassis on. It's as if you're missing a chassis. Where, where to go? Where to go, guys? Where to go? And also, this is the thickest chassis here. All right? Yeah. Uh, Alex Hanson said, compare it to the Super Nitro. You, want, you mean like in length? Okay, so this one we're going to have to put it down like this because uh, it doesn't stand up. Well, this is a Super Nitro. Okay? Um, I'll do it. I'll compare it. We got nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'm going to set the body down gently on the T-Max Bible. Right there is a T-Max Bible, by the way. Okay, that's where we keep it. Okay, a T-Max Bible. Super Nitro. Oh, I got no table space. Hold up. You know what? We're going to get the Yokomo on the floor now, actually. Yeah, here we go. And the Super Nitro is going to come here. Right, Super Nitro RS4. You can't kill it. Now, we're going to stand them up. Okay, so the Super Nitro also doesn't stand. But I got to say, the cutout game on the Super Nitro is sickening. You know, it, it's as if they forgot. They gave this a tiny little .15 engine. It, it's basically sickening on the Super Nitro. Look at that. Somebody, if you want to use this as a wallpaper, do it. Look at that. We got chassis colors of all size. All size chassis colors, guys. You can't kill... The purple, the blue, the gunmetal, and the silver. Question is, what's your favorite color? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a fan of the silver. Thing is, like, with these types of chassis, when they get scraped, they're going to look like trash. Okay? Um, Ofna, I would say they have a good chassis color combo here. But silver, I mean, if you're not anodized, then, then you're going to be good. You know? Check this out. Now this, this right here, this is beautiful. Let me move the light a little there. Now this, this is beautiful. Okay. Yeah. What's up, Mighty Mike? How you doing, my dude? How you doing? All right. So the question is, let's now compare the micro here to the Super Nitro. Yeah. Let's, uh, don't have that much table space right now. Hold up, guys. And my table is uh, sickeningly small. 
Okay, so we're gonna put them bumper to bumper. Okay, it's as if they parallel park just now. So this is the Scudo 9R with a 0.9, one horsepower motor, one horsepower. What's up, Aldra S, how you doing? This is the Super Nitro RS4 with a point, I would say 0.5 horsepower motor. Yep. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? This is double the power of this and probably half the weight of the Super Nitro, okay? So this is what I would call truly sickening, in my opinion. There, you know, you cannot get more sickening power to weight than this, you know. But I will say, I love the Super Nitro. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite chassis, but <clears throat> engine-wise, you're not going anywhere fast. It, they're not fast. Uh, these are, I've seen some videos where it was sickening. But the thing is, cars like this are not really that drivable. Yeah, Sean Stabsky says like a strip club tonight. Well, you know what, my dude? Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Uh, I guess you're right. So... Uh, this air filter sucks. It's not original to this car. I got to say, this is a sickening air filter set up on this. It's it's very nice. Like, look, even the way the, the top of this rubber element comes up, like this air filter cannot possibly pop out. You know, the, the design is incredible. All right. It, it's, it's honestly beyond incredible. Look at all the hardware that's on this thing. It's, it's sickening. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. Question is, do you think I'll be able to see a uh, a fuel filter in the tank? I don't know. Let me look inside. No, I can't see. Yeah, I can't see it. The pickup is like two, two on the bottom. Man, this thing is beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, so let me put this on uh, back now. And we will uh, continue doing what we're doing. Okay. Okay, let's move this. Let's move this. All right, man. Look at this. It's, <laughs> I don't know. I, I love this thing, man. I love, I love it, guys. I love it. You know? Okay, so, Ofna, uh, TC3, and the one of this video, the topic, the Scoot. Look at this cool anodized cooling head. You know? I didn't do a lot of close-up views in this stream, but, like, check that out. It's, it's beautiful. Okay. Let me move all this to the side. And sickening, says Sean Stabsky. That's right. Okay. Time for us to... You guys want to take a look at some uh, vintage mini nitros? There's a ton of mini nitros in this magazine. It's probably going to blow you away. So I would, I would get ready to be blown away. Uh, I know Joseph Watkins out here loves magazine time. Am I right or what? Yeah, I'm probably right. Okay, let's do it. So uh, this is, they got the Schumacher Rascal, the Kyosho Nitro Mini, HPR Micro RS4, I don't know what that is, and some to me. What's up, the art chemist, how you doing? Clever username, I gotta say, super clever. Okay, so this is nothing that interesting. Um, we're just gonna skip a couple pages. We got Team Orion over here. We got Team Associated, uh, GT2, factory, GT2. What is this? This is, oh man, OS Speed, the tuned 12TZ. Joseph Watkins says magazine, my favorite. That's right. And this this is gonna be stuff that like, I'll tell you right now guys, most people don't even know about with like micro nitro. It was a big segment years ago. It was, it was sickening. Um, Racing Bashing RC says talk about the GT2. Unfortunately, I don't have one. So I really have not much to say about it right now, but that was like the last model before they got discontinued. Let's see, um, electric, we're just gonna move on. Wasp engines, oh, very sickening. The future is now. Well, somebody should have told them. Unfortunately, they're dead. Okay, Novak Velocity, I had the system when I was younger. It was actually sickeningly wicked fast. Like this claim what they put here, wicked fast, it was wicked true. Okay, absolutely no lies about the Novak GTP, GDB, GTB, or the Super Sport systems. Um, Mini CRT5 says Ethan Pierre. Well, it might be here. This is some, uh, you know, team-associated uh, vintage propaganda over here going on. 
Let me move this light a little, guys. All right. How's the lighting? Is the lighting okay for you? It's probably fine. Okay. No, uh, the lighting's not good. Lighting's not good. I'm angry. Okay. Uh, we got a low C. What is this? Yeah, the low C muggy. Also don't know much about it. Other than it was probably too much money, of course. You know, it's a low C. Um, let's continue. Now, as I go over this, you guys might see some cars that you have, you know, that I didn't talk about. Oh, what's this? The Sen uh, G unit. It's called the Mini MG uh, 16. That's pretty nice, man. Look, look at that. The Mini Nitros, they were sickening years ago, man. They were all around. You know, Tokar, what's up? I see you're talking about the XY NT18. It might show up in this magazine, Tokar. So just uh, wait a second. We're going to get there, my guy. We're going to get there. Don't you worry. Okay, let me uh, position myself a little bit better, actually, because I'm kind of standing awkwardly and uh, not very comfortable. Let me get rid of some of these items on the table, okay, guys? Yeah, look at that. It's beautiful. Even the body sits. Look at this. It's incredible. Mini Nitro over here. Who else could say they have themselves a Mini Nitro? Very few people, you know. They might have expensive cakes, but no Mini Nitros. Okay, so I'm going to move this over here, and then we will uh, just continue. Uh, okay, so I'm hoping that this style of video will be, will be adequate. Fred Pilarzik is here. Well, dude, I just unboxed this. This is a Scoot 09R. It's a mini nitro. Pretty much it can't kill it, and I have it. No, this is a 0 .09, Borat's cousin, 0 .09 engine, okay, with a two-speed, all right? Look at the bottom of the chassis. It's going to blow you away. It's as if they forgot to put the rest of it there because it's so damn fast, okay? Yeah, all right. So let me have a little bit of my uh, so soy milk from, uh, no, almond milk, right? We don't drink soy milk here. We don't need estrogen. Uh, we just need anything in a nitrogen cup. That's almond milk. Okay, get one of these. Um, it's sickeningly good. There's a link to the to the to the cup in the in the below this video. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's look at the magazine, shall we? Okay. Yeah, the bottom looks like my serpent. Says the art chemist. Well, these were competition track cars. You know, it's a small 112 scale, but you could see right there is a transponder. This was sickening. All right, let's continue. Oh, man, I remember this. The Duratrax Hammer, Fire Hammer MT. It was, it was very expensive. Look at that, Hammer Time, they said, yeah. More like Nobody Bought It Time was, was what it was really like. Yeah, Nobody Bought It Time is, is the real answer. Okay, servos, we, we don't care about that. Um... Uh, so hold on, Dion here with a question. What is the longer right, lighter Revo under the MG G unit? Okay, so for you right here, Dion. Uh, it, they're saying Vantage Extended Graphite Chassis. Oh, you know what? I've seen these. I've seen some Revos with these chassis. So this is a carbon fiber chassis for a Revo. Basically is what it is. I've seen Vantage pipes, and I've also seen, I have this, by the way, the E-Savage, but not this body. Yeah, with the carbon fiber chassis. I've seen some of these go for sale for like crazy money. Okay, let's continue. Vintage magazine time. That's what it's about. These are mini mini LST and some crap. And all of the minis you guys are talking about, we might come across it in this issue. Okay, this is the mini nitro issue. What's this? Offna. Offna is pretty much kicking ass right here. Yep. DM1 Pro. I, know, I never heard of that one. Probably too much money, that's why. <coughs> oh, Team Associated, what do you think about that? This is the Team Associated uh, TC3 Plus. The exact one I have right here. Oh man, that's that's pretty nice. That, that is pretty nice, actually. I love coming across the nitros that I actually have and I can actually show you guys. It makes me a little happy, to be honest with you. Okay, let's go. This, uh, nothing really exciting here. This is some, just some tech tips. Okay, 
Yeah, Ethan Perrin says DM1 is a legend. Yeah, I don't doubt it, but it's probably, it was so out of my price range, I probably didn't even notice it. We got the Schumacher um, ST1. I know someone in the Nitro Gang group has this. I saw a picture of it. Somebody posted a picture of the Schumacher ST1. I don't remember who it was, but somebody did. Uh, usually a member of the Royal Nitro Gang, which is, uh, you know, the UK-based people. Okay, this is more tech tips and stuff like that. This is a, uh, oh, Inferno 09. Inferno, yeah, 09. Yeah, the, the mini Inferno. So the mini Nitros, they were, they were sickening. You know, they were all around years ago. Look at that. High performance rear exhaust engine from Serio. Nice. Look at that Serio, baby. They said it. So included starter box for easy starting every time. So usually the mini Nitros had specialty starter boxes. That is sometimes the situation. Okay, let's continue. Um, what's this? Uh, doesn't matter. I'm just going to continue. Okay, so this is a tab. Oh, nitro generator. Yeah, actually, I have this. I was going to do a video on the nitro generator today, but I forgot. So this, that was actually the topic of today's video, but sorry, guys, I forgot. Well, it'll be the next, to next topic. So someone mentioned this before, the Jammin CRT.5. It says, meet the truck of the year's little brother. Ethan Perrine, that's right, bro. I told you it was going to be here. Don't worry, bro. Nitro Gang, I'm going to forget about you, man. So it says actual size. Check this out. So I guess this is the actual size. Man, this seems smaller than my Scoot. Let's see if I take the Scoot, what happens. Oh, man. Let me, let me remove the body right here. Yeah. So if I take the body, if I take the Scoot, uh, if I put them wheelbase to wheelbase, oh, man, it's basically the same. Check this out. I have the wheel nut here, you know, lined up. Basically almost the same. I know it looks a little different because like the way the magazine is bent. But it's the same size other than the fact that this has bigger wheels. Check that out. Yeah. Nice. Can't kill a nitro. Right. So what, uh, let's see what specs they talk about. So they're talking about one tenth scale wheels, which is really nice because you always ran into wheel problems anytime you had a micro nitro. Yep, yep, that's right. Okay. Uh, so it says it has a Force 12 engine. Force 12 engine, not bad. Okay. Yeah, Offnachik says the issue with the CRT5 is that you need two rare size servos. Um, yeah, so basically, I guess it had specialty servo sizes, right? Otherwise, the engine looks relatively similar to like the G3.0 engine to me. Fuel tank, it's all specialty. Yeah, I could see the servos look super tiny over here. What does it say about the servo? Oh, right here, off the chicks are... Yeah, right here, it says, I'm going to read it for you, off the chicks. The CRT5's mini servos are larger than micro servos, but smaller than standard 110 scale servos. Well, that makes sense. Basically, they were trying to piss you off. Okay, what's up, the online hobby guy? I am glad you're here. Let me give you a little catch-up, online hobby guy, bro. This is a vintage Nitro from 2008. It's super tiny. It's a 112 scale. It's a two-speed. It's called the Scoot 09R. It's got tons of carbon fiber, and it's very, very small. Do you see that right here? Look how small it is. What's up, Fabian B? How you doing, bro? Mini Nitro day. This is a mini Nitro day, guys, all right? So, off the chicks, you were right. Okay. Team Associated, TR, I never had any of these. By this point, Team Associated was basically done. Um, well, no, that's not true. They had they had MGT series. That was pretty much uh, very good. Okay, so here is an issue on, I guess, all the micros. X-Ray M18. Um, yeah, this is an electric. We're going to skip that. Kyosho Mini Z, these were super, super popular at one time. Yeah, Mini Nitro Monday says I was fresh. That's right, bro. It is. Uh, this is the Losi Mini LST. They were uh, dual motor setups. Here we got uh, the X-Ray M18, the electric model. I never had one of these, but I always wanted one. Here we got the Hyper Hobeo, uh, which is the regular 8 scale buggy. Oh, they got, what is this? They got some South Park characters over here. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We got the Schumacher Rascal. Oh, that's not bad, actually. Hold up a second. They're saying 40 miles per hour, 
for, it's called a little truck with a big bad attitude. Oh wow, 0.18 engine. That's pretty insane. This, this might be the largest engine in a tiny nitro ever. But it doesn't really say what size it is. I'm looking all around. Yeah, it doesn't really say the, the actual size, which is weird. Okay, but, but they do call it a mini monster truck. A mini truck, that is, you know. Nah, I don't want to say monster, but mini truck. Okay, we got uh, some electrics. We got Mamba uh, brushless systems. These were the best you can get years ago. The mini Mamba uh, Max, I think. Micro Mamba Max, they were called. Low C fuel. Later, Nitro Mad. Later, talk to you later, bro. Spectrum, okay. Um, we got Sen Genesis right over here. Sen, oh, guys, I have this. I bought this recently in a video. I can't believe I actually found an ad for it. I am highly amazed. I am high, highly amazed. Okay. <coughs> mini, mini, uh, mini mart right here. One stop shopping. So these are all of the mini RCs that they had. Okay. So uh, let's see. Well, these, these look like all electrics. I don't care about them. Oh, wow. Look at this. The Ducati Nitro motorcycle. So I have this. Uh, well, it's not mine, but I basically do have it right now. It's a one fifth scale nitro motorcycle from Thunder Tiger. You know? That's right, you can't kill it. Nitro years ago, it, it was the shit, okay? They had so many different concepts and ideas and like different parts, and it was interesting. Yeah. I remember these brushless Mamba systems. They were like when I first saw them come out on the market. I know, you know, whatever, I'll put down brushless, but years ago, like this was before the Nitro Gang, all of that. Oh man, th these were destroying nitros. Um, of course, well, pretty much ready to run nitros. Um, we got some mini stuff over here. We're going to continue. Um, what's this? Okay, NT18. Okay, so this is the X-Ray series of micros. So right over here goes from the top. X-Ray M18 uh, M and M18MT. So this is electric. Don't care about it. We only really care about right over here. You guys see that cooling head? When you see a cooling head sticking out from the body, you know you've hit the jackpot. Oh my goodness, it says 0.05. That's insane. Po I didn't even know 0.05 type engines existed. Uh, well, I mean for, for like on-road touring cars, you know. Obviously, they do exist for certain other things. But this is a 0 0.09 right over here. 0 0.09, baby. Scoot. It's called a Scoot 09R. 0 0.09 non-pull start engine. And this, 0 0.05. Holy moly. Yeah. Yeah, Von Boy says he has uh, RC magazines where they show only nitros. Yeah, basically. Later, Benjamin Martinez. See you later, bro. Okay. People saying, oh, what's this? We got a new chick right here, RC Boca. This is the Boca bearing chick over here. Okay, it's not bad. Off the chicks. I got a new one for you. What do you think about that? She probably knows nothing about any of this. At all. She probably knows, uh, what the hell is she wearing? What the hell is that? Okay, well, maybe often chicks will tell us. Maybe that was a trend years ago, you know, called uh, trash shoes. Anyway, Boca Baron chick seems uh, pretty fast, pretty, pretty great, I would say. I would say one of the, one of the best ones so far. Okay, a anytime you see bearings. Oh, no, no, is this, or, no, this is some kind of hobby store. She's not a bearing chick. Yeah, my bad. All right, let's continue. Um, Parma, they, they they had bodies. Okay, here we go. Final review of the Schumacher Rascal. It says 116 uh, mini nitro, 110 scale power in a 116 scale package. Pretty nice. Okay, so the 0.18 engine, this is the one we talked about just a little bit ago. Look at that. So it's the, called the X18 uh, motor. Can't kill a nitro, guys. Oh, typical weird Schumacher uh, throttle return spring. For some reason, the Schumacher-based throttle return springs look like they were designed by uh, uh, like a fifth grader. You know, I mean, I, I understand it's probably effective, right? But it it it's very silly looking. Like no other manufacturer does this. Um, these are single speed. So Schumacher has a thing where everything is a three speed, but these are single speed. So I don't know if this is an, a, an actual like Schumacher design, you know, it probably is because you could tell 
the weird throttle spring over here. You could also tell they're using similar style of carbon here on top. I would say it's very similar and really weird, similar looking like uh, screws all around that are, what, what are these, like these star screws, right? Yeah, straight from Briggs and Stratton, says Ethan Pierre. Basically, that's right. Yeah, it's very weird. Yeah, Schumacher had this like weird about everything type of thing. Um, but it was fine. Oh, man, we got ourselves. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold, did I just understand this correctly? There's a chick over here with bearings. But there's also a top speed test that says what they just told us before when they said this did 40, this says 28. Oh, my goodness. We've just discovered a conspiracy. So we now have to go back and investigate what they said before what the speed was, we've discovered a conspiracy and only a bearing chick can actually help us, okay? You can help us? Yeah. What page was that, guys? They said this thing only does 28 miles per hour. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised. So let's see, where was that Schumacher rascal ad that I was just talking about? It must have been somewhere before. It must have been like somewhere in these other pages. Where they claimed it was 40. Yeah, right here. Is this the same truck? The Rascal? Yeah, the Rascal. It says right here, the Schumacher Rascal. It's the same exact truck. It says 40. Uh, What are we going to do? Guys, what, what are we going to do? Should we call up their customer service right now? Schumacher Rascal with a .18, which is exactly what I just showed you guys. It says 40 miles per hour. What, what the hell is going on? Now, over here, this is the same exact truck, Schumacher Rascal. They're saying 28 miles per hour. I mean, 28 and 40 is really, really different. It's actually super different, okay? It's beyond different, Jose Ortiz. Yeah, it's RC conspiracy by Schumacher. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very devastated. We're going to have to do extreme testing on all of their three speeds. Yep, Nitro Freak wants, wants us to check out the bearing check servos. We could definitely do that. So... Yeah, servos are, are, I would say, very high torque servos, probably very fast and coreless. I would say coreless and maybe even high voltage, okay, with uh, definitely a standard Futaba connector, okay, v very good servos. Yeah, but this is completely an RC conspiracy, 28 miles an hour versus 40, get out of here. I think they put the bearing chick next to this ad so we wouldn't get pissed. But guys, they're not going to catch a Nitro Gang in a conspiracy. Get out of here. Get out. Come on. All right. We got some Traxxas stuff. A T-Max. Um, more T-Max. Can't kill, can kill T-Max, as I like to say. Uh, or Nitro. Or really anything that I own. Okay. <clears throat> Let's continue. Oh, man. There's a lot of Traxxas ads in here. Okay. Uh, Sport Max, which was, you know, today they're actually very collectible because so few of these sold. Um, they were just rear-wheel drive with, like, a stadium truck-looking body on the Sport Max. Yep, Joseph Watkins, you're right, my dude, you're right. Ooh, Jado, baby. This is an old school. This must have been the first 3.3 .3 Jado. Let's check this out. This is actually very interesting, guys. I, I've, I've discovered a speed chart. In this magazine, holy moly, get ready! Somebody, if you want to take a thumbnail of this, I'll hold I'll hold my uh, recording device very steady for you. So it says, greater acceleration, uh, blah, blah blah. Let's see what we got over here. What's up, old and slow? Acceleration graph. So we got Jado 3.3, which is yellow, this top line. Then we got the Rustler right under it, which hits 50. They're saying, which is reality. Then the low C triple X NT. And the Duratrax and the Associated. Yeah, so the Associated was always actually the slowest. <coughs> you know, a lot of people like to uh, hold Associated at like this, um, you know, premium top tier, you know, winner circle thing. But the thing is, in every single graph I've ever seen, Team Associated was basically always the loser. Okay, well, in terms of speed. I don't want to say in terms of handling or not. Um, yeah, so... Team Associated here, they're saying that basically it was, what, like a, a little over 30 miles per hour, the way I see it. Okay? Yeah. Let's continue. Oh, yeah. Traxxas 4-Tech. 
uh, well, this is the plat, the electric one. Here is the one you want. Now, people be loving these right here. 70 miles per hour. Oh, man, I, I think they made this up. I don't think Traxxas ever had a 70 mile per hour claim on a Nitro. Do, do you guys remember this? Like, tell me right now in the comments. Uh, I'm reading the stream right here. That's, that's you guys over there. I don't remember them ever having 70 mile per hour claims. I think they revised it down to 65, like in future, uh, you know, ads. Because th there's no way this is faster than the Jato. There's just, just no way. Well, it says it's faster 0 to 60. I don't know. It says the Jato was slower in 0 to 60. I mean, a, it, maybe it's possible. Maybe it's possible. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Von Boy. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember if they ever, like, modern claims on, on the Fortec if it ever said 70. Now, we're not saying it can or can't. We're just saying the claim. Okay, just just a claim, you know, we're not here to examine reality. We're here to examine the claim, which kind of is a reality. Okay, so here we go. We got another one, baby. The Kyosho Half 8 GP Mini Inferno. So uh, 116th Nitro Buggy, right? Uh, I never saw anybody run these. Probably because Kyosho tried to kill people with their constant discontinuing of product lines and maybe their prices. Let's see, does it say how much this was over here in the specs? Oh man, it was $399. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's it is what it is. $399 for like a mini, you know, but it did come with uh well the engine is a serial engine. Serial is pretty serious. You guys get that joke? Serious for serial. Yeah. Let's continue. Uh we got some Ofna classic 9.5. Probably the buggy of the mid 2000s, right here. Uh, not maybe this one, but maybe the hyper. So it says now with new 0.32 engine, 50 miles per hour. You know, I don't know if they could do 50. I would give it like maybe 45, to be honest with you. Just because it has a bigger engine doesn't mean it could actually go faster. You know, I, but uh, often she could probably tell us the 9.5 violator was, I would say, the icon of, of this generation for like the often buggies, uh, in my opinion. Okay, we got uh, some engines. We got HPI Micro RS4 Drift. So basically, it's a regular Micro RS4. I have one. I was going to bring it for today's video, but I forgot. So I have basically two of these. One like new and uh, one modified with a crazy brushless system in it. Okay, we got some Nitro House stuff. Got some more Ofna stuff. We got uh, a guy holding the Durotrax Fire Hammer. You know, this is a one-fifth scale gas, but these were based on the FG. On the FG, does he look happy to you? I don't know. He's probably thinking, "When am I gonna have to replace my carb? What am I gonna break my pulse starter? Is the uh gonna be discontinued soon?" He's probably thinking all of that. Yeah. So at this time, look at this. They had twenty-three cc engines. Like it was very low, but and, and they were not cheap. But they were based off of the FG. Um, Jose Ortiz goes, is that you hybrid? Unfortunately, I never made it to an actual RC magazine. You know, um, not a sellout like certain people on YouTube these days. But, okay, here we go. Trinity. Finally, this is what I wanted to get to. Um, I've been looking for these for a long time. Trinity Next, it's called. The next big thing. Although, you know, we, we definitely know they uh, they never made it to the next big thing. Let's see what's going on here. Check this out, guys. And more vintage Nitro buggies. Um, so they're calling this the Lil, Lil Drake. It says, Trinity has extended the Adam Drake engine series into mini mills with the next Drake's 0 .095 engine. Did you guys see that? 0 .09. That is basically the engine in the Scoot right here that I have. Okay. We got ourselves a near Drake engine. Near. Well, almost. Not, not really. Anyways, it's a buggy. I personally don't like buggies, but I guess in a in a in a mini nitro, it's probably something you need. Price wise, let's see. Oh, that's very decent. Two eighty five. Yeah, two eighty five is not bad for Trinity. But I I really don't remember these ever being like sold or popular or anything. Like, um, it just it just wasn't. Okay, let's continue. We got XTM. I gotta love me some XTM. Okay, they had some awesome ads. There was a time when I thought XTM was going to be the next Traxxas, you know, because 
when you look at their ads, they want you to look at two things. They want you to look at the price and they want you to look at the speed, which is exactly what Traxxas did except the price. Now, guys, I have this right here. I have it. I showed it in one video. It pissed me off. I think I put it away. But it's basically like new and I have it, okay? And uh, you can't kill it. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's this? Vulcan SE. I've never heard of this one. IRC Racing. You guys heard of this one ever? Aluminum options highlight IRC's RTR Nitro Mini, it says. So this is a 116 Nitro buggy. A 0 0.05 engine, it says. 0 0.05. Okay. It's tiny. It's very little. It's like they forgot to put it in. Um, let's see. It's, it's another buggy. Personally, also don't care. Um, it looks similar to that Trinity. I, I gotta say that this square air filter, filter, why did they think a square was a good design? I don't know. Well, I'm not saying it's not a good design, but I'm just saying like, compared to everything. Oh my goodness. $370. Well, that makes sense. That's probably why they killed themselves. Distributed by Internet RC. What the hell is that? Okay, let's see. Sticky shocks. That's a that's bad bonus. Fully decked out ride. Okay, well, deck it out, son. Deck it out. Top speed, 25. Uh, for a Nitro Mini, that's adequate. Uh, it's kind of ironic because this is actually almost the top speed of that crazy Schumacher with a 0.18 engine, which was like, what, 28 miles an hour on the Schumacher? Yeah. Yeah. Joseph Watkins, I agree with you, bro. Joseph Watkins has always wanted a Mini, but saved my money. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, the mass public did not really see these as a viable option to buy because you could tell like their prices were basically the same as um, modern, you know, 110 scale and up nitros. Uh, how you doing, Joseph? Uh, Jose Velasquez, how you doing? He goes, what's up, Nitro Gang? Grandmaster Yoda, that's right. Magazine time. So, you know, you really weren't getting much like during this time period uh, for, for micro nitros. Okay, what else we got over here? JR Racing Servos. That's pretty nice, actually. It says 128 ounce inches of torque at 0 0.06 seconds. It's, it's freaking crazy. That's crazy speed, yo. Oh, we got some, um, what is this, jamming, jamming chicks? All right, well, whatever. This this one's good. This one's good. All right. Yeah, too much money. I agree, Borat's cousin. Too much money. Uh, Tamiya Frog? N nobody cares. Frog, you could suck it, okay? This is not the 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 Tamiya Legends channel. This is not uh, Tom Lee's RC's channel where every day you, there's a new best crawler. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness, did I just see what I just thought I saw? Well, this is a Savage X ad. The big black monster truck, man. Nothing like looking at a nice big block nitro motor. 4.1 cc, baby. That's right. Acer chicks better. I agree. Says uh, Jersey Jason. Lipos. Oh, man. Look at the price of these lipos. This was like years ago. This is actually kind of interesting. Oh, we got ourselves a little bit of a time travel. This is the intro days of lipos. Guys, check this out. This is a 2007 magazine, right? Uh, $70. 4K lithium polymer. What are they talking about? 4K? Oh, my God. Someone. Someone. This is funny. 4K lithium polymer. This is 6K, 8K. What the hell are they talking about? Um, Max Amps. So Max Amps is a reputable company. Um, 4,000 milliamp hours. Oh I, oh, I guess they're saying 4K, 4,000. Okay, yeah, I'm a dumbass. Um, correction, correction. 4,000 is, I guess they're fine. $70 for a 2S. Okay, crazy, crazy. Low C, 8. So now they're, uh, I guess they're out of mini and they're back to 1.8 scale buggies. So this is, you know, the typical 1.8 scale nitro buggy. Do I care about it? No. Okay, I, I just don't care. All right, I understand people love them and they have them, but once again, we don't care. Off the mutilator. Here to uh, scare you with their names. Okay, we got some other crap over here. The X-Ray NT-18. Super classic. I had a chance to buy this, but, um, you know, I, I didn't buy it. But I had a chance to buy it, and I should have. You know, maybe one day, maybe one day I will. But right now, I'm a little bit uh, invested in, like, my other nitros right now. So, it's, uh, it's probably a situation at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Tower Hobbies ads. Nothing better 
than a vintage Tower Hobbies ad. I have this, Tower Terror. I understand that some people in Nitro Gang Group also have the Duratrax Warhead. Uh, they also have the HPI Hellfire, the Nitro MT2. Of course, the Baja, you can't kill the Baja. Oh my God. Are they trying to kill us with this price? They're trying to kill us. Yep, they're definitely trying to kill us. Okay, some other ads, whatever. We're not going to talk about this uh, for now. Oh, wow. This is the Nitro Thunder Tiger motorcycle. I, I don't think I've ever seen like an ad for it, brand new. Uh, 369 One Fitzka. This is the one I have. Uh, not bad. This is actually very cheap. Wow. 369 I thought these were like a lot more money. Uh, right next to it, we have... The tracks is stampede, but this is the electric one, right? It's only $154. I mean, you know, it's, it's a regular electric one, but like still. Now, this is the team associated TC3, which is the one I have, 324. This is the TC3. Check this out, guys. Same TC3, baby. You see that? The same one. Two speed. 324. That, that was a very reasonable price, I gotta say. Very, very reasonable. Um, what about fuel? So for some reason, they're only talking about 15% fuel here. And it was like $6.50 or $4.25. $4 Still very, very inexpensive, I would say, uh, for that time period. Okay, so here's the Duratrax Fire Hammer, what we were talking about before. Look at this. Um, it was a one-fit scale. The price was $950. For the MT, 950, you know, for a two-wheel drive, 23cc. Uh, very sickening, very, very sickening. We got some engines, some other stuff, some other stuff, some other stuff. Hobby people, I'm a little tired actually. I, uh, probably gonna go get Taco Bell after this. Very hungry. That cake was very good, but I'm actually kind of hungry. So we're gonna roll through this right now. What's this, drive time? Radar testing. Oh, this is like electrics. I don't really even care. Um, Offna stuff. Other stuff. Understanding differentials. Somebody call up Arma Gang. Tell them they need to read this. Please. Somebody call up the Arma Gang. Understanding differentials. Okay, they, they need to know all about this. All right. Uh, some other stuff, some other stuff, some other stuff. Um, what is this? Some chicks and shirts? Uh, whatever. We don't care about them. Uh, and uh, that's about it. Nitro Gang. What do you think about that? We got ourselves a Scoot 9R. A very small 112th Nitro Pro Touring Car. Okay. Um, you're never going to see something like this on anybody's channel. So get it all in while, while we can. Okay. Um, I will do a more thorough video on this in the future, but this is basically the brand new from straight in 2008. Okay. You're never going to see this. Look at this insane, uh, roll, uh, what is this called? The, the sway bar in the back. It's insane. Carbon. There's more carbon fiber on this than if I was in sixth grade, I would say there's more carbon fiber on this. Then, um, uh, okay, well, I don't know how, I don't have a proper Yo Mama joke, but if anybody can come up with a proper Yo Mama joke and carbon fiber, put it in the chat. Okay, I, I would like to read it. Um, beautiful, be beautiful nitro car. Look at this. It's insane. Look at that. Two-speed baby. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Anyone came up with a proper your mama joke? I don't know. So far, I don't see anybody. Um, do you have a bum box, says Mighty Mike? The answer is a no. I do not, unfortunately, but um, I will have to figure something out. Jersey Jason goes, what scale? This is a 112th scale. So, uh, hella small scale, okay? Hella, hella small. Yeah. Oh, Borat's cousin here with the good your mama jokes. He goes, your mama can't afford carbon fiber. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> You're right. You're right about that. She cannot. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, time for me to probably go get Taco Bell. I'm feeling a little bit tired and hungry, actually. So. All 
Um, I'm gonna stay here for a couple more minutes. You know, we'll uh, maybe talk a little bit about some uh, nitro content. I'm gonna use the Scudo 9R here for my camera holder. Okay, how how's that feel? You you like looking at nitro motor while we're all talking to each other? Actually, this nitro makes a very perfect holder. It's multi-purpose, guys. It's multi-purpose. Now, I know I did not cover some of the aspects that I was planning to that I might, that I'm, that I said I would, you know, especially um, like what, you know, some, some of the original listings, but there will be a video on this, you know, this is just a live. I wanted to share, you know, uh, Monday Nitro Live, you got to talk about some Nitro, you know, eventually you run out of stuff, okay? There's only so much cake you could buy, okay? Um, Best type of, uh, Walter Espinal goes, what's the best type of fuel for Traxxas? It really doesn't matter the type of fuel. What matters is your tuning skill and just getting not bad fuel to begin with. By that, I mean like proper oil content and uh, don't try to kill it. But basically just get, today everyone uses Bones Brew, okay? Some people in other countries, they might not have access to it, okay? Um... But it comes down to a proper tune. I've honestly ran all types of... Uh, oh, Sean Stabsky goes back from speedrun. How did it go? Tell us all. How did, how did your speedrun go? You good? You good? Okay. All right. It comes down to... Um, oh, Sean Stabsky ran the Savage X. Well, you know what, my dude? There's currently a brand new Savage X sitting in my house right now. It's in a box. Straight from HPI. But you know what I want to tell you? For some reason, I was drawn to do a video on this little mini nitro. I don't know. It blew me away. I wanted to share it with everybody. Okay? We all have savages. Some of us have three to four. You know what I mean? Yeah, nitro freaks a sidewinder is a good fuel. But yeah, it's good. Uh, all these fuels are very, very similar. Like, I, I basically tried them all. But they're basically... Uh, all similar you know it comes down to your tuning skills and the percentage of oil and nitro if those two factors are equivalent the raw materials are basically similar oh manuel maldonado goes i need a savage well there's no denying that bro there's no denying that manuel maldonado we all need a savage the question is how many do we need okay and do you like the new phone holder i'm actually using check this out I'm using the Scoot 09R as a phone holder. Oh, oh, it didn't work too well this time. Okay, phone holder is a little unpredictable, but we're back, we're back. And we're gonna keep using this as a phone holder, okay? Anyway, um, yeah. There's a big fat surprise coming from Manuel Maldonado soon from my understanding. Um, and I'm planning on, um, oh, Sean Stapsky's talking about the, the speed. Oh, thank you, Walter Espinal. Uh, he goes, uh, $10 for Nitro Gang. He goes, you're, you're an awesome dude. You basically got me into Nitro and it's so much fun. Well, I am happy. I am happy to hear that, bro. Uh, I think all of us are happy, you know. Uh, I'll be honest with you. A lot of people have been uh, leaving comments talking about how they're now rediscovering the Nitro Gang hobby. And... I'm happy to hear that because at the end of the day, what we want to do is make nitro great again. And if, if the demand for, you know, proper internal combustion nitro engines goes up, then eventually prices will go down. Now, let me give you a little bit of an update. The other day I was uh, just looking at the HRP website and I noticed the price of the bullet went down. Now, they are out of stock, but the price of the HPI nitro bullet actually dropped. So who knows? Maybe the price of the Savage, you know, the crazy $709 price, maybe that price will come down eventually to something more rational. You know, I'm hoping that it does. It, it's basically a matter of time. Um, in fact, the Kyosho USA one price is honestly very fair. Like, I am surprised they're only listing them for like about in the low 500s. You know, they could charge, knowing Kyosho, they could charge like 650 and people will say, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, oh, Oscar Aquendo here with a question. I'm going to answer this. It's a very, uh, fairly common, I would say. Oscar Aquendo says, I would like to know what you think about the low C10T with a 3.4 engine. So th those are very, very good chat, uh, very good engines and cars and, um, 
trucks. Basically, anything low C is good. It's not ever going to be not good. Okay, the 3.4 carb is the top go-to upgrade carb for any Traxxas. Uh, in fact, if anyone has like engine tuning problems on a Traxxas, go to Amazon, get the low C 3.4 carb. They're like 45 bucks. Just put it in low C 3.4 carb. It'll show up, okay? Um, very reliable uh, composite body carb, but they're very good. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, Manuel Maldonado says, uh, I bought my HPI bullet due to this channel. Now I own two. Um, bro, you got to have two of bullets. You, you, I think you understand how good that chassis is, right? Like, it's a remarkable bullet chassis. Actually, one of today's topics I was considering was uh, making the bullet great again. Like, another one that I've been working on for a while. So, have just some basic engine things. Like, you know, exhaust, gasket, stuff like that. Um, and... I love the 110 scale like segment in general because it's very easy to run. Like, you know, you got to love a, a big block Savage. I agree. But the thing is also, um, let's see, by the way. Yeah, we got ourselves a new phone holder. It's called the, the Scoot 09R. We're just going to do all our videos like this. Everybody should be able to see an awesome nitro cooling head in every single video we do. Right. You guys understand? I understand. All right. So what, what are we talking about? Um, okay, I forgot my train of thought. So the, the big blocks, the big block nitros, they're cool. But once again, they take more fuel, you know, um, the running costs are higher. Let's just call it what it is. Okay. And you generally tend to need more space because yes, they're larger. The turning radius isn't as good. You know, the only problem I do foresee, I'll tell you right now, guys, the, the main problem I foresee running into with uh, like a small block nitro is a replacement engine. So let's say you're running a, um, you know, the nitro bullet. If you want a replacement engine, you're pretty much going to have to get another HPI G3.0 motor. The reason is there's basically no side exhaust small block engines left. Like if you can name... A side exhaust small block engine that will fit a regular HPI, put it in the chat. I'll, I'll be interested, you know. Maybe I'm missing something, but I highly doubt it. Um, but if you can, you know, just, just do it. But once again, I highly doubt it. Okay. Let's see. How's, how's this view? We're going to view it like this. All right. Oh, well, now you can't see nothing, guys. All right. Anyway. Okay, so this view sucks. We gotta change the view. Hold up. Yeah, we're gonna go back to this view. All right. So, anybody aware of any small block rear uh, side exhaust nitro motors? I'm not. You know. Uh, how about Kyosho? Um, 0.15 Fortec motor. Well, yeah, but that that is not really you no. Know, that that is not even a contender. Um, that 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 has no power. Like if you put that into instead of the G3.0. Um, you will be punching yourself, okay? It, it's not a contender, and it, it's not even that cheap, so it's, it's just not a contender. Sean Stapsky says 36 miles per hour. So that Savage, you like at a speed run, you should be hitting about 42. Nope, like you know, low 40s. You should be barely getting low 40s. Um, lean it out a little bit more, see what you get, okay? People here are saying the OS 12 CZR. I don't think that's even sold right now. So I'm talking about like normal new replacement engines and not like some high-end engines, okay? We're talking like a replacement engine for a basic pull-start nitro. Let's say you have a uh, like a modern. So the 18 CVR is also not sold. There is no 18 CVR anymore at all. There is no 18 um, OS engine at all for, for car-based use now at all. We're talking about new, Okay. If you guys can come up with any, you know, I'll be interested in myself. Maybe I'm missing something, but but I don't think so. Walter Espinal goes, anyone know any other car that has an electric start? So Traxxas has electric starts. The thing is, um, don't let that be your, like, guiding thing, okay? Because it really is kind of irrelevant, Um Let's see, off the chicks here goes, Hyper 12 comes in rear and side exhaust, but you can buy parts. Yeah. So once again, we're talking about new engines. Um, 
okay, it's possible that some of these like uh, Chinese VX engines, you know, the SH, okay, SH. Um, why didn't anybody say SH-18? I just thought of that right now. What are you guys doing? You daydreaming, looking at this cooling head? Probably daydreaming. I understand, it's okay. I understand looking at a nice uh, cooling head is probably tough. It is probably tough. Uh, anyways. Anyway. Yeah, uh, as, in my opinion, as long as they make the 0.188, the G3.0 from HPI, we'll, we'll be fine. If they give it that motor, it's it's over. Like for side exhaust engines, it's over. It's not good. But basically, the end of the road. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's see who else what we got over here. Um, yeah. Old and slow. Yeah, you're naming like older older engines that were like in RTRs and stuff like that, some of them. But, you know, we're talking about new. There's basically nothing. Well, Jose Ortiz SH-18 is junk. I don't know. You know, personally, I have one. I think it's pretty okay. Like, it depends what your expectation is. My expectation is just get it to idle long and long enough so I can do a fair amount of push-ups. I don't have crazy expectations, okay? But... Um, it's like a hundred dollar engine, you know, like wh what do you expect? As long as the pulsar doesn't break right away and like it holds a tune. Okay. Um, it doesn't really, I'm not going to go into, you know, all, all of that stuff. What's up, Albert? Him and as he goes, NWO. That's right. Okay. Um, Von Boy, he goes, I don't know how the situation is in the USA, but here you can get force engines. I, I don't think I've ever seen, like, a force engine for sale in recent, like, uh, history. Like, at all. Like, at all. Okay? Um, basically, it's over. Yeah. Anyway, guys. I think we've uh, talked enough. It's time for me to go take care of stuff. Put my nitros away. I got work tomorrow. Might go get some Taco Bell right now with a soda. I might bring the Scoot 09R in the car with me take a couple pictures we don't know but i want to say thank you for uh everyone being here yeah big okay so big block engines are fine uh as you got dynamite engines for like the foreseeable future you got tons of dynamite engines you got 0.21 the big red the 0.28 you got lrp engines but small block there's really nothing there's nothing okay well you got the os21 TM, which is a small block, I guess. Yeah, I guess you got that, but that's like a three hundred plus dollar engine. I'm talking about engines that are that are inexpensive. Okay, you're gonna run into a situation with those, is what I'm saying. Um, all right, guys, let's say our goodbyes to each other, and make sure that whatever you're doing, keep making nitro great again. I am out in those Facebook Marketplace deals trying to buy more nitros, but today. This guy told me he sold it before I could even talk to him. Pissed me off. Okay? But what are you going to do about that? All right, guys. Thank you, Manuel Maldonado. I hope everything went good with that with the airport pickup. It's mad. That's what matters, the airport pickups. And tomorrow I'm waiting for a package. Who knows what it's going to be? But rumor has it, it's a giant nitro. Okay? And we love any nitro on this channel. But when it's giant, it's even better. Exactly. Yes. Sean Stapke says, get what you pay for. With the OS21 TM, I will admit, that is a fantastic engine. Okay. And if I'm lucky enough, you know, through certain, you know, growth of the channel, um, I will get one and stick it in a Revo or a T-Max. Because, because we all need to know, like, we need to know the upgrade potential for small blocks in common nitros. Now, any of these tracks as chassis, they're common nitros. People ask these questions constantly you know what engine could i get to make it faster to make it better to make it more reliable and really the best answer is either a dynamite 19 which you won't really be anything different than the 3.3 uh the best engine to get is is the 300 dollar you know os 21 tm the, the, there's nothing better than that uh it's it's confirmed across the board i'm not just making this up it's it's a fact okay jose ortiz goes my first stream well how was it you liked it it was okay I'm glad you're here. Don't miss any more, bro, okay? And uh, in the future, come back. Oh, Walter Espinal goes a couple push-ups. Oh, man, I would do some right now. But it's actually kind of, uh, I don't know where I'm going to do them. All right, should we do, should we do some push-ups, guys? I'm actually training. Let me tell you what we're doing. Okay, you know what? 
Walter Espinal, I'll do some push-ups. And then, after that, I'll go get some Taco Bell. Walter Espinal, let me tell you something right now for all of you. I'm pushing myself to get up to 100 push-ups. That is the challenge. Whenever we have trolls on this channel, I am allowing all of you. You know, don't be mean to them. Don't curse at them like they like to do to us. Tell them, challenge hybrid to a push-up contest. Whoever does more is going to be the undisputed winner. And maybe, maybe I'll give them a special surprise, okay? Maybe that's what will, go what will gonna happen. So 100 is my goal. Now currently, I am not near that. Let's do a little for now, okay? Because uh, why not challenge some Nitro Gang haters to push-ups? Let's all get strong and fight them, okay? With push-ups that is, okay? Not actual violence, all right? So hold up, let me get set up here. Actually, I uh, don't have that much room. So we're gonna use this as the phone as the phone holder because the Scudo 9R is basically good at everything. What do you guys think about this? It's a freaking holder. That's right. Okay. So we're gonna start it right now. Hold up a second. We're gonna do some push-ups. I cannot guarantee you how many I will do because I just ate a bunch of cake right now. Okay? All right. All right. All right. Man, I have so many nitros around me, it's not even funny. Oh my goodness. The question is, should I do some push-ups with a nitro on my back? Okay, I don't know if I could put a nitro on my back. Actually, that's going to be a problem. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay, you guys ready for this? Okay, how's that? You got to look at the Kyosho over here. And you see this CD3? All right. All right, hold up a second. We got to adjust. We got weird lighting going on. Okay, guys, are you ready? Okay, I don't know. I need I need to like put this on me somehow. Watch this. We're gonna do push-ups with the weighted uh, off the CD3. Okay, let's see if I can. Oh man, this is gonna be weird. Oh, hold up. We got the off on the back. Okay. Oh man. I got nowhere to put my legs. It's not enough room in this sp space in this room. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20. What do you guys think about that? I bet you never saw that before in your life, huh? We gotta keep doing more. Hold up. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh. Oh. I bet you never saw that before, did you? Oh. People said they wanted push-ups. Well, I gave them Ofna weight-assisted push-ups. Now, the question is, will the Electro Gang face the 100 push-up challenge? Now, I'm not saying that I will do 100 with them, but I'm saying I will destroy them. That's all that matters, because you know why, guys? We train with Ofnas on our back, okay? Now, sometimes I train with a Nitro Dog Teddy, okay? Borat's cousin goes, Raminator push-ups next. Woo! So I actually did um, three pull-ups with the Raminator, okay? So that's 80 pounds, all right? So uh, I did do it. Um, you find me someone else that's gonna put a 110 scale two speed nitro on their back and do push ups. Nobody's gonna do that, okay? Especially not, not Kevin Talbot. He's not gonna do that, okay? I challenge him to do that, okay, guys? All right. All right. For some reason, 
doing push-ups makes me uh, do a lot of trash talking. Okay. All right. I deserve some Taco Bell now and a little bit, guys. What is it that whenever I do push-ups, I feel like talking trash about the haters? <laughs> but come on. Did you like those assisted push-ups I did with, with, the, with the LD3 on my back? Often checks. I did that for you. Okay. You will say one push-ups will be worth a hundred donation. Uh, well, how am I going to do that? So you will say one push-ups. How does that, how does that work? I would have to put the whole box. I, I, the thing is I'm by myself like here. I, I don't have anyone. Um, I could easily do it to be honest with you. That's right. Guys, I actually did pull-ups with two Bajas in a video. Like, it was a long time ago. But I put a Baja over here on each side with, like, a, a rope. And I did pull-ups with uh, two Bajas, okay? I'm not playing around. It went down, okay? Um, question is, people want me to do USA 1 pull-ups. No, push-ups. I could probably do uh, some, but the question is, how am I going to actually do it? Uh, the gene thing says I saw that. Yeah, yeah, it went down. I was actually stronger back then. I'm a little bitch now. But, you know, too much Wendy's and Taco Bell and carbs. But, you know what? Should we do some USA 1 push-ups? I mean, I'm up for the challenge. This is nothing for me. I'll train whenever. Okay, because whenever the Electro Gang challenges me, I gotta be prepared. I'll train day, I'll train night. Unless, of course, I'm on my day job sponsor, I won't be training. <sighs> okay? Question is... Alright. We're gonna do this. I've decided. Let me just think how I'm going to do this. Yeah. Uh, savage push-ups. I don't have a savage in my in the room right now. How about this? Sean, uh, no, hold on. Who said that before? JD Posse. Let me ask you a question. Under my table. Are you ready for this? There's always a Revo under the table. Should I do some Revo push-ups? Will that make you happy? What do you think about that? Revo is good for everything. All right. We could do some Revo push-ups. This is, this is actually prob probably heavier than the USA one, okay? Um, who wants some Revo push-ups? USA one sit-ups. Well, actually, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but uh, JD Passy, you want some Revo push-ups? I never turn down a push-up request. I want you guys to know that. It's never going to go down, okay? All right. 33 cents says, says, says Sean. Nah, I can't do 33. <coughs> Basically, I'm not even wearing shoes right now. I'm wearing like house slippers. It's, it's very slippery. Okay. Let's get on it. All right. All right. Are you ready for this? Nitro gang. All right. Oh man, I got nowhere to put my feet. We need to move into a uh, all electric warehouse like Tom Lee RC. Whew. All right. We're gonna do it. You ready guys? Well, this is actually kind of hard. Oh man, I don't know if I could do this. Can't really move my head, guys. Hold up. Okay, you ready? If it falls, it falls, whatever. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now that was sickening. You tell me who's gonna do Revo push ups. Nobody. Okay? Yeah. I could have done a ton more, but unfortunately, I'm not wearing sneakers right now. It's actually a little slippery on the floor. Okay? What do you think about that? I could do push ups, pull ups, or whatever the hell you want. All right? Yeah. Now, just don't challenge me to do anything else because I'll freaking accept. Okay, I don't turn down any kind of weightlifting style competition. Just know that about me. Whatever it is, I accept. Back when I was in 12th grade, and I knew I could bench about 135 at that time. I was a little skinny bitch, right? This guy put on 185. He goes, dude, I did it. Ever since then, they called me the Chuck Norris of RC. Okay, actually, they didn't know about RC. They just called me Chuck Norris. <sighs> All right, guys. That's it. Make sure you're training. And if anybody asks you what the Nitro Gang push-up challenge is, you tell them. You just got to beat hybrid. Okay? Doesn't matter what you do. And if they want to handicap me by putting on a one-tenth scale Nitro on my back, I'll still accept that challenge. Okay, I'll accept it. I'll do push-ups with this while they do little unassisted bitch push-ups. Okay, what do you think about that? All right, guys. I think we had enough. What time is it right now? Let's see. Oh, 9.37. Okay. It's 9.37 in my area. I got stuff to do. And, uh... Let's all have a great night, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna take like two minutes here to respond to your comments and then I will be out. Uh, it's gonna be a Taco Bell night, of course. I, I think I deserve it. Those push-ups were probably about 30 calories, okay? That means I could eat five different food items, right? Kidding, it's only three. That's right, people think they do a little bitch workout and they could do whatever they want. It doesn't work that way. You didn't burn enough calories, bro, okay? Uh, just understand. And that, that advice goes for everybody. Oh, man, Tagri RC is lucky. He goes, I got some Panda Express tonight. Well, you're lucky, bro. I wish I had that in my area. That's right. Yeah. I could have probably done about 40 of those Revo push-ups, but considering I'm hungry, it's late, I'm tired, and, uh, you know, no space where I'm doing it right now, I actually couldn't do that more, uh, do much more. Plus, I was, it's really hard to, like, you know, go up properly so the repo doesn't drive off. Okay, now, the real challenge is, could I do push-ups while it's idling on my back? That would be the real contest. You know what? Maybe we'll do that in the stream next time. We'll do idle repo push-ups, okay? Because why not? The Nitro Gang said so. All right, guys. Let me say goodbye to everybody. Thank you all for joining me. We're going to keep making Nitro great again. And for now, see you all later. I'm out. I'm still here. That was a trick. Okay, I'm going to be out in a minute. Yeah, I'm just looking at the comments. It's kind of fun now. Basically, almost no one's in the room anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. All right, guys, no more joking around. I'm actually out right now. <laughs>